this is episode 21, so if that's wrong, you can certainly blame the guy with the Muppet. Oh, what a star. <laughs> uh, he hasn't, hasn't had a haircut. I mean, I shouldn't be laughing at incognito muggings. No. Because they're not funny, but I do find it very amusing that they've decided to leave your clothes. <laughs> We've got a good looking team, darling. Mm. I'd describe them all as housewives' favourites. Chester's got the body of an Adonis. <laughs> Can I believe it, man? Good impression. Yeah, yeah not well bad. Done. It got better as the impression yeah, went on. Oh, hello, Marlon. I said to Anne, should we leave this up on the fridge permanently? And she was like, no. But it's still there. Big Marlon's still on the fridge. Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast with myself, Dan Bardell, and Thomas Julian as well. As usual, are you well, Tom? <laughs> I'm very Terrible well. Terrible introduction. It was horrible, wasn't it? I always uh, feel a bit exposed when we do the introduction, because like, I don't think about what I'm going to say and then just bleh. It feels, comes out. it feels more uh, raw, the fact that we don't have any games to talk about. Nothing has really happened in the Villa sphere. There's a few few bits we can touch on, and we want to talk about the ladies as well, because they've had uh, they've continued their great start to the season. Yeah. But in terms of the main senior team, um, it's a bit quiet, isn't it, at the moment? It's difficult to do an hour's podcast when there's no games to talk about, I would say. Yeah. But not for ta- young talents like uh, ourselves. Well, in general, it's, it's difficult. You've got, you need to start with an apology, don't you? Do I? Yeah. Why? Because you people would have been watching the podcast on YouTube last week and they'd be like, oh. <laughs> why, is there no, why is there no video for the last 10 minutes? Or, uh, Do you yeah. want to tell them why there was no video for the last 10 minutes? We finished recording and I, I turned I turned the thing off, basically, pulled out the power socket. Now, our camera is so antiquated that if you, Ron, if you take out the power supply to the wall, uh, it, it dies immediately. So, uh, yes kind of my fault that we uh, we lost power it's like kind of your fault entirely your fault <laughs> seems fair well i mean yeah there's no defense to it you'd so. had a shocker as well all night really oh like, yeah the, the I, whole you just summed up the evening didn't it i mean i need to apologize to my wife i need to apologize to you i mean, apologize to you well yeah i have you apologize I'm, to me last week you don't need to apologize again you've right. done it you've done the apologies yeah you're making me you're apologize. an over apologetic person that seems fair um interesting interesting week uh, Mark um, <laughs> we've, just, we've just literally said there's nothing to talk about and then you've started with that's been an interesting week that in, terms of, <laughs> in terms of how you consume your football we were asked uh, last week about Mark Jerobe uh, uh, asked by Mark Jerobe what, how different international week is for you I kind of felt like things don't really change for me to be honest yeah. but you're you're Internet, you you kind of block out international weeks as a week to see the in-laws. I mean, yeah, for me it's hell, <laughs> sheer <laughs> sheer hell. Um, yeah, I just tend to usually we tend to do stuff with the in-laws or my niece and nephew when there's an international break because there's no football to really distract me because England don't tend to play on a Saturday, Sunday, mm. do they? They play on a, on a Friday, Monday, Tuesday, or, yeah. or whatever. So the international break gives me a bit of football-related freedom because. I intake a lot of football. You do. I watch a lot of football. I watch every piece of football that I can. So it's a nice break for Ange. I, I imagine I, I ended up going to the Natural History Museum with my niece and Ange. How was that? It's all right, mate. But it's, a bit, it's boring, isn't it? It's not football. It's boring. I, I mean, I like the Natural History Museum. I mean, Museum. no one who listens to this podcast will be shocked. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not going to Villa Park, is it? That's no. For sure. I had a nice vegetarian burger at Honest Burger. D- Dolan knows the owner of Honest Burger. Sure. Just a little story. Do your niece and nephew have any interest in football? Are they keen to go to Villa Park at any point? Not really. Their niece was obsessed with dinosaurs. Ah, well. She's like a young Ross Geller. Yeah. I kept calling her Isabella Geller from Friends. They don't it, have the big goes, dinosaur there. goes over head. Do they? There was a lot of dinosaurs there. But they used to have the big one in the entrance, and now it's a whale, isn't it? Mm, you know what? I can't even remember. All right. That's yeah. how good it was. Let's get let's go on to Villa. Uh, I can almost feel people switching off. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about international break then. And obviously the big talking point is Tyrone Mings made his debut uh, against Bulgaria in an incident-filled night that probably won't be remembered um, for all the all the good that was there, aka the England performance, and will be overshadowed by horrible racist chanting um, and just an absolute mess from from Bulgarian fans yeah I probably about 70 minutes in 75 minutes in just turned it off Mm. because I just thought it's academic really I mean it was academic anyway because England were comfortable yeah but just the whole football just feels academic when there's still people like that operating in the world. Yeah, 100%. You've got to give absolute credit to uh, to Mings and the other players out there who, who carried on. And But there's a, there's a shot of Mings where he's just talking to the assistant and it's just like... You heard that. You can hear that. And and you see it in his eyes and it's just like, this is his debut, man. It's like, a really, it's supposed to be a really special time and... and I hope that he'll remember it as everybody said what an incredible performance he put in whereas uh, and it won't be kind of uh, obviously it will be blotched by by 
the overtones. But his family are there, aren't they? Yeah. As well, he's flown his family family in when he found out he was starring. It's just they shouldn't be subjected to having having to hear that. I imagine. I mean, Ming's pretty much said so himself, didn't he? That he just kind of doesn't bother him. I mean, I'm sure it does bother him. But you know what I mean? Like it's war off a duck's back to him. If people want to be idiots, let them let them be idiots. And we've said before that he's like an exceptional footballer and he's an exceptional human being. He's just such a character. Mm. You don't. They don't build them like Tyrone Mings anymore. You don't often see someone who's just so eloquent and switched on and such a good player as well. We've one of. I think he's probably the, one of the best signings we've ever had. Like ever. The impact he's made on this football club is huge. That's interesting. Somebody, uh, Liam Bryan, uh, West Midlands Football on Twitter. Uh, after debuting for England against Bulgaria on Monday, despite being subjected to racial abuse, is Mings the best signing the club have made this decade? And you think maybe maybe longer longer than that? I just yeah, I, I'm just trying to think of who's like people who've been exceptional. Someone is like pulling Dwight York from uh, Beach in Tobago. Yeah, that's a pretty good signing, isn't it? That's good yeah. business. That's, that's great business. And you've gone on to sell him for, for, for a lot of money. Paul, Paul McGrath, obviously one of the best players Villa have had, but arguably the greatest Villa player of all time in my time though I just can't I can't think of just a, a signing that just seems to have gone perfectly like everything has been perfect he's coming in we're terrible at the time Milner he comes in not least just it's his character I guess Milner didn't make such a difference from when we were really struggling in the championship to now we're a Premier League well, force and he's a real well before Mings, before Milner came in that season before we finished sixth yeah, yeah he comes in I mean, the next yeah. season we finished sixth again season after when he has a storm we, f- we finished sixth for the third time mm. so just where we were when he when he came in and you think of how many just nothing players we've had over the years that just don't care and everything Mings has done has just been flawless I'm talking myself into him being uh, the best signing since I've supported Aston Villa and I've supported her since I was seven and he's got a magnificent story obviously coming from Chippenham Town I think it is somewhere somewhere like that signed for 10k or whatever and uh, and then it looks like it might the, the the kind of curve might be going back down at Bournemouth because he can't stay fit. And Third he, choice left back. Yeah, totally. He's not being played in in his right position and and the 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 meteoric rise that he's had and and that was something that Southgate highlighted as well, wasn't it? The fact that he's kind of not come through the academy system. He he's a little bit more worldly wise than some of these young players, um, and he can immediately offer leadership, you know, uh, experience and. To, to go through what he went uh, through on his debut there just shows the measure of the man. He's just not traditional in any way at all. He's a credit to... I mean, I, I don't want to talk about the racist stuff too much. I don't, want, I don't want to dwell on it at all. But just, he looked like he'd been playing international football his whole life. Like, he almost looked more of a leader and more settled than Harry Maguire. Mm. Harry Maguire's played in the World Cup for England. He's gone to Manchester United for £80 million. Pounds. Just Mings just handles everything that happens to him. He just makes everything look easy. He's strolling forward with the ball, or powering through yep. with the ball. He's he's athletic. He, he's quick. He reads the game well. He's a leader. He's vocal, and just put him in that setup. Some strong characters in that England team. And if you were watching that game for the first time, you'd have you'd have never known that was his debut. If you were watching football for the first time, you'd have never known that was Tyrone Mings' his England debut. Yeah, he just looks so assured and and so comfortable. He's so unique. He's an unbelievable man and an unbelievable player. The uh, the president of the Bulgarian Football Union, Borislav Mihailov, uh, has resigned after the, I mean, uh, the manager needs to resign. The manager and the goalkeeper Barona. as well. He was he was in on it. It's just burying your head in the sand, isn't it? It is a bit. It's like. I know it's a completely different culture, and I, I heard a, or read a couple of journalists on Twitter, like at the um, at the press conference after the game. A couple of the Bulgarian journalists were just like, "Ah, oh, f off, Southgate." They, they, I saw this. Did you see the video clips of that? No, I didn't see. There's them. some video clips of them just being really rude, to Southgate saying you're over exaggerating this, you're overplaying. What happened? Is there on the camera? What happened? Yeah. It's, it's horrible. It's just, it's just ridiculous. And there are cultural differences here. Not that I'm making excuses or anything like that. And I, but I guess that's where it's come from. But this is the start of it. That the Bulgarian football union president has now got a couple of people. Michael Johnson on Twitter suggesting Stan Petrov go for that job. You know he's yeah. doing the uh, UEFA kind of um, diploma in. in I wonder what he made and, of all that. Stuff. Yeah. It'd be interesting to know. He didn't he? tweet about it. Did no, he's he? not going to. Is he? To be fair. No. Well, I, I mean. Well. He, he, he could, he could say so. He's chosen not to, but uh, it'd be an interesting role potentially for him to get. He understands the world football is obviously a highly regarded international. You know, maybe 
I mean, we're here criticising the mentality of some Bulgarian people, but yet we've spent time with Silian Petrov, who's probably one of the best people I've ever spent spent time with in the in the, in my life. Yeah, hundred percent. It's Bulgarian. It's weird. It's, just, it's a weird mentality, but it almost it's so premeditated. Like you see the pictures of the stickers before mm. the games and stuff. It's, it's premeditated. It, sh- it just shouldn't be happening. Mean, it shouldn't ever happen. Yeah. But it shouldn't be happening in this day and age. But also, it's worth saying. I mean, we as a country have got problems in in general with with racism and things things like that mm-hmm. as well. We're not we're not perfect. And as a club, like yeah. we've we've had that. Yeah, issue. yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, we spoke about it at length last week. It's just it's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there there have been four arrests, uh, which is good. I think we kind of need to highlight as well the fact that, that UEFA should be doing more you know you've seen these like 10 grand fines th- throughout the history Nicholas of Bender got fired more for wearing paddy power pants didn't he yeah. one year oh, well, I mean England has, I, th- I feel like the British football has always been punished worse than, than yeah. kind of the, the Eastern European nations and I don't know whether that's because Britain can afford it or, or what but you know, it starts with the UEFA and it starts with the punishment, doesn't it? You, you you take the football away and maybe things change. Yeah, as I said, though, I don't I don't want to dwell on it too much. I think we've probably co- probably covered it. It's kind of happier, happier things. I mean, I'm happy to see him talk about Tara Mings playing for England. Well, let's, let's talk about let's talk about the other England uh, uh, the other Aston Villa internationals. Then, obviously, John McGinn scored a hat trick for yeah. Scotland against uh, San Marino, which was which was wonderful to see because he. He's not had the happiest time in a, in a Scotland shirt. A bit in and out, hasn't yeah. he? Not performed. I mean, he's he's clearly one of the best players in that Scotland team, and yet it's a bit like you know when Roy Keane or, or whatever went to or Robbie Keane went to Ireland and they couldn't perform as well as when they were playing for their clubs and stuff I like think that. Robbie Keane's Ireland's record international goal scorer. But I mean, he 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 could have scored even more if he was playing in the England team, for example. That's kind of what I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's. <laughs> I mean, I look at their their back four. Apart from Robertson, the left back, I didn't really know who who the other three were yeah. playing in the back four. I don't know if that's naive knowledge by me or, or not. But I think it, it should be. Scotland have always struggled, really, haven't they? International level. I think how many tournaments? They're Since at Euro, 98. They're at Euro '96 and they were at '98, which were two of my earlier tournaments in my lifetime. But they've just not been there since. Well, Robert Snodgrass never went, did he? He's no, just retired. He's me. just retired. Yeah, all the best to him in mm. his international re- retirement. It's a funny one. I mean, people were saying it's only San Marino, but you can only beat what's put out in front of you. As we were talking about last week, he still had to score a hat trick, and it's again, it's a phenomenal achievement that will stay stay with him for the for the rest of his life. It's not easy to score a hat trick in central midfield. To, to be fair, even if you play in San Marino, I mean, we've seen England play against some of these lesser ranked nations over the years, and it's not not always easy to break down back five then the midfield four and then the strikers sitting in as well it's not yeah. always easy So, and it was horrific conditions as well I caught a bit of the game mm. absolutely terrible conditions so he deserves all the credit in the world and it just you're talking about, we're sitting here talking about McGinn and we're talking about Mings it just shows our recruitment policy over the last year has been pretty good Yeah, been pretty strong well let's talk about a couple of other players that have come through the door in the summer then Trezeguet played full 90 minutes uh, for Egypt against Botswana that was a classic did you see that? I mean I didn't manage to catch that no, one no, I've no, not seen that one I've not up to date with my Egyptian football right. unfortunately you should watch the highlights Egypt in a, in a close fought 1-0 win so that's that's important that big game Egypt Botswana it was in, it I don't was, know what Botswana I don't know much about <laughs> Botswana if I'm being honest I know even less about Botswana than I do about Egypt right uh, saying something it's yeah. a friendly so yeah. you know I mean they, they all count Selma know? retired from international football he's not getting picked because he's not going he's not been away with Egypt you'd think you'd still be being picked wouldn't you I don't know I don't know. I was thinking about Elmer the other day actually because he signed a one-year contract and he was in the team. Signed a one-year con- and an extension to his contract to next summer. And he hasn't played. He hasn't mm. started against the league. No. I feel it's like weird, wasn't he, he? But he's useful, isn't he? He's useful to have. Good around the place, I think, as well. Elmer very yeah. popular in the changing room. Uh, Douglas Luiz was another one. Played for Brazil under 23s. Uh, they he's lost in there, isn't he? Yeah, they lost three-two against Japan. He, he scored last week as well, didn't he? he scored a thunder, thunder strike. He's, he's got a shot on him. To be fair, I remember. Uh, <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, it's just well, yeah, he does. Yeah, I always said last week that the. the Norwich goal was one of my favourite goals that I've seen in, in ages. Yeah, I, I remember when he scored against Bournemouth coming on the podcast and just thinking he's a defensive midfielder. I wouldn't be expecting to see that every week. Yeah. And he's scoring worldies for Brazil, curled another great one in against Norwich. He's obviously got got something in his locker from range, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. I always like having a midfielder that can score from range. And to be fair, with the exception of Marvellous, who I don't think I've seen have a shot yet. Mm. We've got a few. They've all, they can, Connor can hit them from range, McGinn can hit them from range, Jack. 
uh, Louise. It's nice. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, Connor, speaking of which, didn't didn't get on last night. He was seen uh, doing his fitness work after the game when everyone else had got home. They were basically sh- shutting off the lights, weren't they? Um, he'll want to be playing against Brighton for sure. I mean, he will be. We're not going to change that team from, from the last game. Yeah. He'll be, in a way, good that he's rested. In a way. I sound David Brent. <laughs> I didn't think that's a... He's, he's definitely he'll be he'll, the rest will probably yeah. he does I mean he's not the kind of person that wants to be arrested is mm. he you know he wants to play every single game that he can yeah. but might be nice and fresh for us now on, on Saturday I, the general reaction I saw on social media from Ireland fans seemed to be not happy that he wasn't playing yeah well um, Whelan played didn't he instead yeah. and uh, it's not really instead though because Connor's been playing with Whelan for yeah, for Ireland they've been playing Whelan in front of the back four and then another two central midfielders in front I mean I don't I haven't done my research so I'm not sure who played in front in front of it, I think Hendrick played, didn't he? I, I couldn't tell you. To be Come honest. on, no, man. I couldn't tell you. This was okay. a late edition. Was it? Looking, uh, okay. at, looking at Glenn Whelan and seeing uh, okay. what's happening. I think the Hearts fans are liking Glenn Whelan as well. I think see him doing well. He's a likable chap, isn't he? He works hard, and and in the Scottish, in the Scottish league, he can still do. Uh, a, a great job no disrespect to the Scottish League but I watched Hibs for a couple of years when they were really bad and it's a, it is slower was McGinn there when you were no. uh, he wouldn't have been no I think it was too he was too young yeah. he, he might have been in the in the, in the the setup, but he wasn't he wasn't playing um, but yeah the, the Hearts fans love love Wheelow and it's good good to see that he's continuing his continuing his pre, uh, pro, professional career up yeah. at North he'll get going as long as he can there are, there are a few questions uh, speaking of our international players um, Stephen Deakin says who's next for their international break Grealish Target and then Rody as well says El Ghazi Wesley Engels Gilbert who, who do you who do you see coming through the ranks next I mean France is I read a feature on Football 365 about the top nations and it had their first team, their second team and their third team. And I'm pretty sure Francis' third team would give England really? a real scare. They've got phenomenal depth. So Was Gilbert in there? No. Right. So I think Gilbert's going to gonna struggle to get in the France setup, But at the moment, they have got just a phenomenal set of France. They're the best. Nation-wise, I'd say France are the best. I mean, it's, they've won the World Cup, didn't they? So that sounds like a silly thing to say. <laughs> but... That they just depth is incredible, friends. Sure. So many good footballers. El Ghazi's played for Holland. You'd imagine he's had a good end to coming into this international break. El Ghazi's had a couple of good games, hasn't he, where he's made goals and assists. Sure. He'd stand a chance because Ryan Barbell's still playing on the wing for Holland. Yeah. Isn't he? So you'd think El Ghazi's got, got a chance. He's played for Holland before. Jack's the obvious one. It kind of international break came at the wrong time for him because he just had a couple of good games and he ran the show against Norwich, had his best game of the, of the season. Southgate will want to have a look at him. Madison's obviously perhaps made a mistake of withdrawing with the flu and then being to pitch in the casino. Yeah. I don't think Southgate really is keen on that kind of thing. So Jack's the logical one. And to, let's be fair, that's the one we all care about. That's what we want to see next because Mings has played for England. And the minute we laid eyes on Mings, we fell in love with him as a fan base. Hmm. It feels a bit like he's played for England, and you even saw the Wolves fans who were quite vocal yeah. against Villa on Twitter. They're all saying, "Oh, we were we were wrong about Mings. He's a he's a class act. He's not a waste of money at all." And you can, could almost feel the nation falling in love with him. Oh, one hundred percent. I felt like there was a there was a universal, if not a, a national. Um, a, adoption of Mings yeah. as a as a national team player and obviously nobody should go through what he had to go through no. to, to get to that stage but it, it has accelerated the nation's love for Mings and, and I see him being involved in the, in the squads as long as the performances keep coming for, for years to come if he stays fit he will get in the, get in the Euro squad Mings he's in a good position because he's left footed we don't have any other left footed centre backs that I can think of Ben Mee is the only other left footed centre back who's English I can think of Ben Gibson's at Burnley as well realistically they're probably not going to get called up Mings enables you to play with a back three or play with two and have balance and I mm. think Southgate is a big believer in, in things like that Maguire looked more comfortable next to Mings than he did yet next to Michael Keane oh, Keane's had a really big fall from grace yeah his England, so. stock has fallen dramatically if the World Cup started sorry if the Euro started tomorrow mm. the four centre-backs are Maguire Gomez Mings and John Stones yeah 
then that's that. If he continues to perform as he has done for Villa and he stays fit, Tyrone Mings is a cert for the Euros now. Also, that brings us on, and a few people were asking this question, Villa mad, Kieran Akul, uh, Wayne Homer and, and a lot of other people, should we be concerned with the form of our, our, our star players, particularly Mings, McGinn, um, yeah, Grealish to, to, that, to that list? About whether they're potentially on the on the on the transfer list for other teams looking looking to grab them, and how worried should we be that we might lose them in January or even the summer? I never understand that question because you don't want your players to be playing badly, do you? You, no. want them, you want them to be playing well, but so I guess it's a good thing. Yeah, of course it's a good thing, but it, it then puts them in the shop window. I guess the I guess to rephrase the question, how strong or how resilient is the is the Villa um, board and and the kind of directors to say no, we want to keep hold of these players, grow this team, and perhaps hopefully grow into a top ten, top six side. Well, I think we saw their intent last summer with Jack Grealish and Tottenham. I think we. Sh- sh- yeah. I think we saw that they don't take any prisoners. Mm. Spurs messed around. We didn't need to sell. And in the position where we're standing in Premier League, we don't need to sell anyone. Mm. All three of those are on big, long contracts. I don't think there's anything to worry about at all. They're all, they're all happy. I think Jack at some point will go. He'll go in, in to a top six team. There's obviously Tottenham in the summer. I think Vertonghen and Aldevira are both going to go. So Tottenham are going to be in the market for centre backs. You'd say Mings probably fits the profile of what Spurs would look for a little bit. Yeah. But you've got to remember, Villa are the ones that have given these players a platform. Especially with McGinn and Mings coming, coming, in, recent, coming in recently. I mean, Mings hasn't even been here a year. Yeah. And look at the meteoric rise he's, he's had since he's been at Villa. McGinn loves it by all accounts. That Villa as well. Talking about Matt Mings, uh, McGinn going to Man U. Why? I know it sounds stupid, but why would he want to? Mm. We're certainly in no danger of losing anyone in January. I think you've hit absolutely on, no chance. You've hit on a good point there in terms of it's less. To me, it's less about Villa having given them a platform, but it's about people enjoying their football. And it feels like Villa have had teams, even in the Steve Bruce era, where. Players are happy to be at the club, and there's there's a good mood feeling around the players, and, yeah. and and we've seen that 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 transfers into the into the fans. And for the last two or three years, especially compared to the two or three years before we went down, the feeling around the whole club is one of optimism and and happiness, quite frankly. And so that's I think really important to players. They won't want to move their families, or they don't want to uh, be unsettled. Especially like you say, if if Manchester United are coming in, and actually the the difference is not that great at the moment. Manchester United are not the team of, of 99 anymore. I mean, their squad is just... Man U is just nothing like the Man U I've been used to yeah. growing up. It's actually borderline embarrassing. Yeah. What's happened to Man U? They've just been run appallingly. I can't think of any aspects of Man U that's run particularly well at the moment. Goalkeepers. I mean... He's injured now as I mean, well. He's injured, but even De Gea's lost, De Gea's lost form. Hmm. Really. Think of the big players that have left Villa over the years. So I think in my lifetime, the first my first transfer heartache would have been Dwight York. Yeah, but he'd been at Villa eight eight years or something at, at that point. My first poster. The reason I support Villa. Yeah, a chance for him to go and play for Manchester United. We didn't like it. We we're all we we're all devastated. He disrespected the club a little bit, kissing the badge in front of the Villa fans. Mm. But you think, okay, he's been at Villa eight years. He's he's gone. Club record buy or club record sale at the time. He's gone. Barry went. That was the worst I'd felt since Dwight York. Again, though, he'd given a long service to Barra. Long time, though. Been there a long time, hadn't he, Bosnich? Young probably gave it a bit longer than I thought than I thought he would, Ashley Young. Southgate? But he went... Southgate was a weird one. We're talking about right, Barry and York and Bosnich left when Villa were good. Hmm. We were good, weren't they? But they'd been, they'd been long-time servants. Staunton went on a Bosman to Liverpool when we were good, mm-hmm. but he was a long-time servant. Barry, we were we were we were good then. That was a little bit demoralising. But again, he'd been a long time. He'd been there at Villa a long time. You can't really begrudge someone wanting to move when they've not experienced anything else. Really, Ashley Young, no problem. Again, he gave long service. He went to Manchester United when they when they were very good, and we were that was when we were starting to go on the downward spiral a little bit. Ash, um, Martin O'Neill mm. had left. Milner, probably, probably the same, isn't it? We were on, we were on the way down. I can't, left. I can't criticise anybody that goes on to win a title. That, no, that to me vindicates any any move. The lot, yeah. The, the wider point I'm trying to make here is generally big, big players that you wouldn't have wanted to lose at Villa over the years mm. have either gone when we've been crap, or they've gone when they've given good service. Mm. Downing, another one, went when we were we were not very good. 
Southgate and you go boating or went to Middlesbrough that was really strange Weird. but it was at a time when we weren't showing much ambition and to be fair to Middlesbrough they were trying to make moves but again all relatively long serving players we're a good place to be at the moment I don't see that someone like McGinn someone like Mings Jack who loves the club I don't see why they'd have any need to go we're we're on the up we every summer we're going to invest more we're going to keep getting better yeah. I think it's, it, it's not like when like Delph left again he left it I mean we all slagged him off and it, the way he went about it was terrible but he went at a, at a time when we were just about to get relegated and he went to Man City and to be fair he played his part and he won leagues like, like you say yeah there's no reason for these players to leave at the moment why would why would they risk leaving I don't think it's anything to worry about. I think players playing well and putting themselves in the shop window isn't isn't always a bad thing. And if any of them do go, the money we're going to bring in and the profit we're going to make will be absolutely ridiculous on all three. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think that's a totally fair point and uh, well reasoned. Yeah, I I've got a uh, I've got an international football game for you that you have no idea about. Oh God. Um, Oh, this is going to test me. <laughs> it is going to test you. So, because because we're a little bit short on content, and I think this is squad a, numbers. Based. This is a good time. No, well, I'm always, I'm always going to be a struggle without that. Well, so it's called International Week Game, which is a uh, how many to come out? That's that? a strong name for it. So it's uh, uh, inspired by Tyro Mings. So it's when did these Villa players make their England debuts? Oh God! Right, uh, and you get a bonus point. You can play along at home. You get a bonus point if you can tell me um, who who they made their debut against alright wow. can I just check that you've done your research and this is all going to be right this is all going to be right it's going to be another Benito Carboni disaster <laughs> no it's all going to be correct ok alright play along at home if you want so I will give you a point for the you don't have to get the exact date you just need the year just the year yeah that might be possible what right. happens if I can come up with a month unlikely what happens if I can come up with a month Another point. Sure. Okay. All right. So you can, you can get a total of three points. All right. If you can get the month, the year, and the okay. uh, and that's the, a big ass. I'm going to go. I'm going to give it my best time. All right. I always do. So play along at home. Here we go. So the first one is Fabian Delph. I'm going to say. Oh, this is. I have to do the maths and go through. The, <laughs> go through the seasons. I think February 2014. Do you want to hazard a guess at the team, the country that, that he played against? Uh, actually, it wasn't February. I had a Facebook memory recently <laughs> no. of when he made his debut. September 2014. Bul- I was going to go Bulgaria. Unbelievable. September 2014, a 1-0 win against Norway. Oh, so I'm giving you giving two you points two there. That's good, though. Good start. Well, good job for Facebook, isn't it? Very good. Yeah. Um, all right. What guy that we've talked about already tonight, Ashley Young. I remember being in a away game, and I can tell you, tell you the manager was Steve McLaren. I can tell you that. You are weird. Is it, have you got Steve McLaren down? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so would the it, notes will only take me so have far. been... I'm going to go no, October 2007 versus it's a Y definitely I think they won 1-0 and he came on as a sub uh, this is unbelievable he's one of the teams that we always draw in like group stages and stuff <laughs> Did we win one nil? Yeah. How have I? <laughs> I sometimes just shock myself at how weird my brain is. I just really complete, complete guesswork of team. Come on. Uh, oh, not Croatia. Russia. All right. So you've gone October two thousand and seven one nil against Croatia. If uh, you said Russia. Uh, sorry, against. Uh, what did you say? Russia. <laughs> <laughs> so it was November. Oh. To, which you nearly said. Yeah, so that's torn frustrating. The two thousand and seven, one nil win against Austria. So then you get one point there. I'm afraid. Right. I'm happy. You know, I'm happy if I can take one point from each round. You, I'm happy. You almost said November though. I know I changed, didn't I? All right, it's Gabby Agbon the hall. Hmm. That feels like a two thousand and eight. I feel like if people listen on the uh, like the speed up. Yeah, yeah you're gonna this have is, to. This is one. September two thousand and eight. I go Bulgaria again. It was November two thousand and eight. Got the year. Two uh, one win against Germany. Ah, so again you get one point for that. He led the line, if I recall, on his own. All right, we'll go a little bit further back now. Uh, Lee Hendry. And this one I can remember. 
They won two and nearly came on a sub and he nearly scored. He came off Paul Merson. You are insane. So it's 1998. November. Moldova at home. November the 18th, 1998. A 2-0 win against the Czech Republic. Oh, it's unlucky. I've got most of that. I, got I most almost of right. feel like I should give you a point because you've got so much of that right. I know. I'm I not going to, but I, I could. Merson um, scored that night. All right, last one. Darius Vassell. Oh, Holland. He was against Holland. 100%. He scored a bicycle kick. It was 1-1. Do I ever get points for any of the stuff that I'm really not there? You got one of them. You get the, the point for the So it country. must have been. If you got it right. Nice. I would say March 2002. Oh, my. February 13th, 2002. Oh. One all draw against the Netherlands. George Boto made his Holland debut that night as well. That is excellent. That was a good effort, to, wasn't to it? To be fair, you got uh, eight good points. Good game. Good game for you. A bit long-winded for a podcast. Eight points out Many of Many people fell asleep at this point. I think the only one was where you couldn't pick a country for the uh, for Ashley Young. But, uh, I mean, that's... I'm happy with that. Are you uh, Like... I feel like that's really unfair that you've got 8 out of 15. That it, sounds worse than it is, but that's excellent. Play at home will be buzzing for me. If you've beaten that, um, if you've played along at home, let us know in the comments. No one's beaten that. Uh, that's a very, very good score. And the fact that you knew all the, or a lot of the scores as well. There'll be someone that can't, comes in and claims that they've, that they've beat that. Hey, listen, you're only playing against yourself, so if you, if you have got it right, you're well done. Don't cheat yourself. Be right. honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Enjoyable game, Tom. Good Enjoy segment. That. Good segment. Good stuff. Um, I want to come to the game for you one day. That will uh, really put you in trouble. I'm being so <laughs> mad. My memory. We've talked about this before. My memory is terrible. Like I, I would forget what happened against Norwich. Essentially, I some mean, people think I did. I mean, you're seeing with my dad on a. Uh, on Saturday and his memory's terrible you could imagine you two having a great chat walking back to the car and neither of you remember anything that's happened <laughs> in the game I'm going to do fan cams and just be like sorry mate what was the score yeah, <laughs> oh. have you never done fan cams before have you no no I'm looking, I'm looking forward to seeing how that pans out it's going to be good yeah I'm excited to come, come and say hello if uh, if you want Gemma will be there old Gemma will be there taking a photo of you oh, on Gemma. your own won't you <laughs> um, did you see James Milner did a what I wore on BT Sport do you know about this I've seen it but I've seen he did it but I haven't watched it I've watched, I know what the concept is though yeah it's good man yeah. like BT good man <laughs> <laughs> no need was there no sorry. Um, BT Sport do a load of really good social content so if you're not following them you should their YouTube stuff is really good so one of the things they do is what I wore they basically get a load of retro shirts which yeah, we're obviously a fan that. of and get a, get a footballer in and they basically go through the the shirts of their career so obviously he talked about um, his time at Villa and about how again they were they were kind of in the ascendancy obviously the 10th, uh, 2010 League Cup final getting close to Champions League football and that just how it was a frustrating oh, I'd like to watch that frustrating time I'm like, not a frustrating time, a brilliant time. He talks yeah. about the quality of our team. What do you re- remember about James Milner as a player and like how influential was he in, in that team and the, the relative success of that team? I always thought he got off a little bit lightly. Do you? In terms of the when he like he left after two seasons. I know I've gone home and said, obviously, he went on to win things, so you yeah. can't begrudge him. But at the time, I remember Barry got to go, went to Man City and he got pelted mm. by the Villa fans, got dogs abuse at one of the hotels. I games. never understood that. Milner gave two seasons of service plus one a few years before on loan from Newcastle. Gave two years and literally went at the first sign of anyone coming in, in for him. I always thought he got off a bit lightly. Like right. He was lauded as some kind of hero and I never really got that. He was a phenomenal player. Yeah. Great footballer and st- st- still a player now that I've like, got a lot of time for. Love watching him. The fact that he's... 33, 32, 33, wow. however old he is now, mm, still going strong at the best team in the country a veteran, at the moment. Yeah. Like yeah, I mean, you <laughs> don't even talk to us about veterans after your, mis- <laughs> your mistake last week. Although I did realise afterwards that he was kind of was the oldest outfielder. Yeah. So a little bit of, a little bit of kudos a for reprieve. you there. Yeah, reprieve is the word I'm looking for. But yeah, you love Milner, don't you? I really do, yeah. I mean, he doesn't get into my best Villa 11 of the since I've been supporting the team. And I think that's fair in terms of. The, what he did for well I'd, you're a bit younger than me so he might have gotten yours and because I, I don't go every week so I don't I guess I don't have the same affinity to some of these guys as you do but I mean in terms of quality I think he probably would get in there I'd need to I need to we should do that well maybe next international break we'll do our favourite Villa right. 11 I feel like we've done it before but uh, maybe, maybe I definitely did it with Lynch when the channel first started yeah but the, I mean 
Milner's just one of the best players I think I've ever seen in terms of he, he doesn't blow you away but he's consistent he's in the way so he's looked after himself yeah, yeah he's such a dedicated pro and obviously the whole boring Milner thing has, has taken on a life of his own and it's excellent but he's oh, it's like a boring Tom Julian <laughs> <laughs> it's just my account yeah, yeah that's just <laughs> um, I told you earlier about how I was listening to a, a podcast on cryptocurrency James so, I mean what was the, I mean, the last thing I was expecting him to say when he got in the car was that the missing crypto queen on BBC Sounds it's worth a, worth a listen but James Milner the fact you even listen to a podcast via BBC Sound seems Pete Julian for some reason as well. <laughs> Fair. Um, I'm the most out of my TV licence money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's got into you tonight, <laughs> but every week I get this. Um, yeah, James Milner just epitomises a, a, a classy kind of quality Classic. player. And, and like you say, he's just kind of gone from strength to strength. Uh, Man City and then winning the Champions League as well with Liverpool last year. And he's... He's kind of reinvented himself a few times. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, that is a good point. And I'll give you credit when you say things good as well. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, I've just really liked him over the years, and and when he eventually retires at the age of like forty-two or whatever, um, it will be. He's going to do a Teddy Sheringham. Maybe. Sher- how long Sheringham was playing into his forties? Wasn't he in the Premier League still? Because well, he took West Ham up, and then Class Teddy Sheringham. Then he take someone else up as well. Like I love Teddy Sheringham. One of my favourite ever players in the Premier League. But Teddy a, Sheringham. But a similar, uh, I, I guess I kind of group them in the, the same. I love these players that get older and yet. Seem to get better yeah. as they get older. And I, I, I've got a lot of respect for for James Milner, but you are right. He he maybe he did get away a little bit lightly. I, again, I don't begrudge him, but if you're going to give you pelters, don't, in, with hindsight, you don't. But at the time, but if you're going to give pelters to to Gareth Barry, then yeah, why aren't they? Why aren't they grouped in the same? Oh nine somewhere? ten. Milner was class. He played central midfield, didn't he? So Barry went and Milner basically moved positions. Yeah. To- to take, Barry, take Barry's place and he scored a hell of a lot of goals for us obviously scored the goal in the uh, League Cup yeah. final as well a lot of assists was play, got player of the season that, that's at the point where every time someone got player of the year they left Yeah, that's happened a few times Milner, Delft, Downing like Villa just jinxed with with stuff like that but he the thing I don't and again another thing I don't like is that he, I think he just hit his found his position playing central midfield every week for Villa he was bang on form looking brilliant and he goes to Man City, becomes a bit of a utility man again. When he plays, he's on the wing and things things like that. I mean, he's gone back to central midfield with Liverpool now in a three. Yeah. That was still at a time when playing a lot of teams played 4 4 2. Yeah. I just feel like he found his position. And yeah, he went on and won things at Man City. But the stuff he won at Man City was as a bit part player. At Liverpool, the, thing, the Champions League, he won that as I think he got the most assists throughout the tournament. Yeah, he did, yeah. Last season, which again is an incredible achievement. But he kind of went from being the main man, future captain. A Villa playing central midfield found his ideal position finally to just go and be a utility man and again I didn't like that mm. he played a lot though for Man City I think I, I, I don't know the numbers sub a lot, though. he'd come right. on the last 10 minutes to see out the game on the wing Did he? protect the full back he I, would have started games but nowhere near the amount he would have started for Villa well yeah of course yeah 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 no, it's, it's, it's a and fair point and that was point. the start of us going down O'Neill leaving then Milner leaving was the start of the decline wasn't it yeah but it, I can't knock him and again as I say he's someone I've got a lot of time for and someone I like watching now still it's a it's a nice watch that so uh, if you if you are following it then then make sure you check that out one thing that we did want to talk about this week can um, I talk about something else quickly just what cool. we talk about we'll talk a bit, bit about Premier League in general it feels like now we're a Premier League podcast that we can just avoid talking about this who's your favourite ever Premier League player not Villa I've got a couple and slash who do you think was the best ever Premier League player because okay. my favourite and the person I think is the best is the same person Okay, do you want to go first? I, 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 mean, I, got anyone. I don't know, I've got two. I don't know why I'm expecting you to have that just I've, locked away. I've got, well, um, I've, I've got two and then my favourite player. This is, this is a weird. So mine's both. So I okay, think they're the best and they're my favourite, Burkamp. Okay. Class. Just absolutely class. So I've got, I've got two. Um, one, one from that Arsenal team, Mark Overmars. I absolutely loved him. Are you saying as he's, a player? You know, you're saying he's your favourite. He's not. The, you're not saying he's the best player. To play yeah, to play. I mean, I'm, I mean, he's definitely not the best player to play. No, <laughs> um, I think Thierry Henry is probably the best. Yeah, player he's up there to, to ever play in the Premier. He's probably my second choice. Um, but those two wouldn't be the names on my on my my favourite ever player. I think I said this this last week. My idol was Stuart Pearce. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You did touch on it last absolutely week. Absolutely loved. Stuart Pearce growing up and his book Psycho genuinely makes me laugh as one of the only footballer autobiographies that I can read he got arrested a couple of times once for yeah, I love a footballer's autobiography I don't read loads often they're, they're fairly like samey Stuart Pearce he, he gets arrested for being drunk and disorderly when he hasn't had a single drink and he just sells it really well Psycho the, the, the whole thing is excellent but yeah um, Mark Overmars I loved Ter- Thierry Henry probably the best player but I was going to highlight Janino as well I Absolutely loved Janino and, and all of these kind of 
fun, fun, exciting players, and I think all three of those guys and Stuart Pearce fit into, into that bracket all skillful kind of players nicely <laughs> yeah um, but yeah good question yeah just let us know in the comments your, who, who your favourite ever Premier League player is and who you think the best ever Premier League player is because it's current because Villa are Premier League yeah. seems fair um, yep. another an, a, 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 something that I wanted to touch on while whilst we're on international break still and maybe maybe a, a team that we don't give enough um podcast time too at we the moment when we can. yeah is the Villa ladies who are five five and five in the uh, smashing it. in the women's championship at the moment and and they are absolutely smashing it they're running a running away with it running a mock you might say <laughs> you might do um, and there was a, there was some big news I think in, in women's football generally and the fact that they've just been sponsored for the first time in Villa's history they've got an official partner with uh, Guard Industries so like other women's like the Super League like Man City mm-hmm. Would they have would they have their own shirt sponsor or would they have the same shirt sponsor as the men's team? We're delving into areas that I don't really know. Yeah, the exactly. to. yeah it was a bit harsh. But I would say I would say some probably have a link with the men's team and some have their own sponsor. It's the yeah. first for Villa though. It's isn't a big it? thing though. It's, it's really good. Well, they, they, they deserve it. They deserve all the success that comes the way because they seem like a great bunch. I think it helps that uh, it, it obviously gives the, the the team more money and hopefully um, that will then be reinvested into the team and the young women's set up the girls set up yeah. and that kind of thing and, and hopefully that will go and they'll get back into the Premier League it's just another one of those things where you just say they make you proud to be a Villa fan hmm. I think I like what they're about they've got a Villa fan in, char- in charge like, this is like Dean Smith Gem- Gemma Davis is in charge she's, yeah. she's a Villa fan that speaks very well speaks very, very eloquently very very passionately about what it means to her to, to manage Villa yeah. a lot of the players are Villa fans as well now and I just think it's a really good set they seem re- really happy like they're getting better all the time they've got their ambitions to go up this season this season and they're absolutely going the right the right way about it so, so far and they just seem a close knit group I just think it's another you speak about positives of at the football club at the moment. I think they're another positive. Yeah, I mean Holly Holly Jen eighty six said, are, "Are either of you going to try and get to any of the women's games? They are absolutely smashing it this season." And uh, we've talked about I it have. on the podcast before. It would be it'd be something that we'd love to do, and I think we're going to try and maybe do a little bit more. Yeah, um, with the women's team. Obviously, it's difficult being based in London, but. They are doing a wonderful job, and the tickets are very, very uh, reasonable. It's a, it's a great. I want to go. Them. We are hamstrung by being in London. Yeah. If we could, if we could make this our job and operate in in Birmingham, it would just be an absolute dream because we could just do so much. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's just not the way the world's working. No. For us, at, for us at the moment, but I'm desperate to get down and, and watch and play. I speak to Emma, Emma Follis quite, quite a lot, and she seems really, really nice as well. And again, I speak to her about the ladies that they're absolutely smashing it. I'm really, really pleased for her. Really pleased for for the team and the. In the club, she scored against. Uh, yeah, sorry, another weekend. free, another free kick. I said, "I've got a little, I've got a little hashtag that I'm going to get going." Go on, Avena. You didn't like, you didn't react to it that well, though. So it's <laughs> making me think it's not very good. Go on, you know, bend it like Beckham. Yeah, float it like Follis. Float it, float it like Follis. It floated over the wall into the into the net. Right. So I can't think of another word that begins with F. No. To, to fire it. The free kick. Fire it like Follis. That's quite good. That's better, isn't it? Yeah. yeah You're annoyed like about that, that aren't you? <laughs> Esky Tom Julia. Um, so they play Durham next weekend. They're in the. Uh, it's the League Cup this uh, this coming Saturday, so that's at seven thirty at Bolmes and Michaels. Um, yeah. uh, so th- th- they played a reserve team uh, in the last round of the of the, of the League Cup, kind of the group stages yeah. or whatever. I don't know if they expect to do a similar thing, whether they're going to rest so. rest for the cup and then drive on in the league. I think from what I hear. It's all about promotion, getting themselves into the Super League. The next next week they play Durham in the league. I don't know if I already said that. And Durham are third at the moment, so I guess that's quite important that they want to they want to keep pushing yeah, on. And, and so they're, they're three points atop the league at the moment. You win that game, and you really start to separate yourself. I mean, we've got the table up here. Yeah. Durham have only conceded three goals in five games. Best defence in the league, from what I can tell. And Villa yeah. have already beaten Sheffield United as well. So right, Villa have beaten everyone. Yeah. yeah, they play Sheffield United in the cup as well. So that will be an interesting one. And we'll try and, like I say, we'll try and kind of keep an eye a bit more because we we don't do as much as we'd like to. But there are there are like under a gaslit lamp. Yeah, I think again they're smashing it. Does still. a lot of does yeah, a lot of women stuff. Got some good some good scoops with the Villa Villa ladies teams as well. So it's good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just wanted to touch on, we're going to do a preview on the Brighton game, but there's obviously a lot of questions about that. Uh, Mark Jerobe, who's already been mentioned in this podcast, not to look past Brighton, but the three games ahead of it could spell trouble for Villa. Without bias, how do you see City and the Liverpool games unfolding? I mean, you can, 
So if we have a good, we have a good game. On you Saturday, fancy Saturday. the City game now that Wolves have uh, no, no, undone no, no, and no, 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 Norwich no, 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 undone. No, no, no. Just not just put words into my mouth here, Tom. Yeah. I spoke last week about the importance of back to back. Into that's what gets you up the league. Yeah. But I've seen a few people saying you must win on Saturday. We need to win. I mean, really, you could say that about any game in the Premier League this season because we need to win as many as possible to make sure we stay in this in this great league. Yeah. But, and go beyond that and hopefully get push ourselves into top half mm. if, if we can. A win on Saturday would be massive and back-to-backs would be massive to get yourselves up the league and give yourself a bit of confidence. You then go into the, the Man City game. They're not the Man City that they were the last two seasons. They're, they're simply not. Mm. They can be got at. Mm. I mean, John Stones will probably come back but by then and their defence will get sorted a little bit. But we'll go there, you know what, and we'll have a go. And that's what I like That's what I like about us. We're not boring. I, sp- I think we spoke about this last week. We'll go there. If we lose, giving it a go, I think most Villa fans will be happy. I don't want to sit there and sit back and wait for them to just hurt us. Do you think it's it, it, on the front foot? Do you think it helps that we're playing away from home and and that we might be a little bit more uh, liberal? Or do you think? Well, we'll probably get more space on the counter attack. Yeah. Obviously, Man, Man, I mean, Man City pretty much play the same way whether they're home or away, don't they? They yeah. just try and suffocate you with the with the excellent football that they're capable of, of playing. But there's no reason we can't go anywhere and get a result. It can, it can happen. There's been some strange results so far this, this season in, in, in games. Yeah. I mean, Man City have been involved in in a couple of them. Yep. Why not go there? I mean, it could it could spell trouble. We might well lose to Man City. And we might well lose to, to Liverpool. Is it Wolves in the mix as well mm-hmm. around that time? And if we do, we do. Anyone can go and get beat by Liverpool or Man City. But I'm not certainly not scared. Yeah. And I don't think there's any need to be scared. It's a good answer. Simon Faulkner with the big question. Um, it's my birthday on Saturday. I'm taking my 11-year-old son, Luca, to his first game. Do I buy him a scarf, a pin badge or a programme to clinch his support? What would you do if you are taking Alfie to his first game? Um, You'd be cheap, Scott. You'd say you have one, one thing you want from the charity <laughs> shop. <laughs> from the charity shop. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, I, I think out of those three, I'd go with a scarf. I feel like pin badges... I got a scarf on my first game, to be fair. Yeah, pin badges... So are um, are a bygone era a little bit. Well, you're knocking the pin badges. Not I'm knocking. Not avid pin badge collectors I, I think, listening to the podcast. I think some people who have them all, that's great, good for you. But I don't think you're starting a pin badge collection now. But you're not going to start a scarf collection either, are you? No, but your scarf then you can wear for future it's for games. life. I mean, my scarf has been for life, not yeah. just for that one game. Um, yeah, that's probably what I'd go with. I'd probably buy a programme as well, though, to be honest. Yeah, you've got to have a programme. First, first, first game. memento of your, of your first game, haven't I've, you? I've framed Alfie's um, first shirt, the, the shirt from last year, which is great because it's Luke Groper and we went up. Yeah. So it's, it's really nice. Good luck charm, Alfie's been, to be fair. Yeah. It's <laughs> he had a rocky few months when he first came. Well, <laughs> yeah. Of us looking terrible. But well, after that... His first he, game was the 4-2 Birmingham win. I mean, he's been spoiled. All he's known is good times. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is you true. You actually the hard time start. Alpha. So, what do you reckon? The uh... I'd go scarf. But I oh, know. I mean, you might already have a kit and stuff already, but you want a memento from that first game. He said there, he's yeah. got a goalkeeper kit. He said about Bosnich, didn't yeah. he? Four mile Bosnich kit. Didn't quite get that. Well, well, he might just have a small sized kit from when he was a kid. From and he's Bosnich. Kept it. Wow, yeah, that, he could have done. That'd be excellent. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like to see a else. picture of that if that's all right. Yeah, um, Simon. Obviously, yeah, if, yeah. You, if you don't put pictures of your son on Twitter and whatnot, then that's also fine. But uh, yeah. that'd be cool. Um, Joshua Leon. We had a good result against Norwich, but will um, the break cause us any issues? Can we transfer the form across this break? Feeling confident for Saturday's game? Yeah. Again, why, why wouldn't I? Good. Nothing to not be confident about. We'll keep the same eleven. I, ima- I imagine they'll all still be there'll still be a feel good factor carried on from the from the Norwich game. It doesn't disappear. You've lost a little bit of momentum, but the feel good doesn't disappear. Mm. C- certainly, but Mings will be coming in chuffed to bits with what, with his that he's made his England debut. He comes into the game now as an as an England inter- international. Certain players will be rested as well, maybe feeling a bit fresh. On that note, it's good to see um, B six. Uh, the flags have, have yeah, got yes. a, a Mings England international flag ready to unveil, and, and they well made, the, made the money. Yes, they, they got there. Yeah, 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 they did, much it. did it last night. So Brilliant. well done to everybody. <laughs> I that, got retweeted that today, so that's too late. Yeah, they already did it. <laughs> but it's good. Good to see. Um, Hoppo Ben with the most important question. I've agreed to go to a wedding. Invite was pre fixture list. Got any decent excuses to get out of it to go see the I game? Mean, I'm presuming this is all day. Yeah, I would think. I so. mean, he's not giving us any context of who is the wedding. Well, it could be his brother's wedding. Or Somebody suggested his wedding. diarrhea, which seems. I mean, don't give yourself diarrhea. No. I would say, I don't take anything. But is he, I presume you means pretend you've had diarrhea. I guess so. I think you're locked in. I don't think there's much you can do at this it's point. It's very late, isn't it? Yeah, you should have asked us this a few weeks ago. Give us time to come up with something. Have you ever 
bailed on a on a wedding to go to Villa? I've definitely bailed on events. Mm. I don't know about a wedding. I've definitely bailed on events to go to the Villa, though. Did you give an excuse or you just said, I'm going to the Villa? Has your mum... Because I feel like your mum would be quite annoyed if you if you said you were going to do something and then you were just like... To, I don't tend to run things by my mum nowadays. No, but if she was arranging something, like, have you ever been really late for a dinner with I mean, extra uh, time? Because of, luckily for me, because my dad... Oh, yeah, that's true. ...has got a season ticket with me, things are planned around it. Yeah. Weddings you can't do anything about. That My own wedding ended up being on the day Villa were playing at home. Of course they weren't when I wasn't there. Yeah. One of the few wins that season against Chelsea, 1-0, Fabian Delph. Um... He's going to struggle. There's not much he can do. He's kind of made his decision. If he's already said yes, you've done, you've done it. Yeah. The only thing you do is pull a sicker. Mm. That's the only thing. In the comments, if you've got any good excuses for getting out of a of a wedding or a major event at very last minute, I think we're we're close. To, oh, that's what I wanted to touch on the Dementia Cafe. Uh, if you have, I, I, I think we're done. But there's another page. Of notes that's a there, another page of notes. Um, the two if, important things on there. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, if you haven't seen uh, the Villa Foundation's latest update, um, they've launched a Dementia Cafe. Uh, well, they haven't launched it yet. It starts on October 23rd, which is next Wednesday. Um, amazing. The, yeah. the, the, the Dementia Cafe has basically started from the money that the Villa View raised um, at our live event at the end of last season at, at Villa Park. And I mean, it was a phenomenal event for us to be able to do it and to obviously have Brian Little and have the auction and, and the, the trophy and everything there. But for this money to be able to, to put on this Dementia Cafe and it's going to run for the, for the rest of the season because of the donations that you guys uh, put in, it, it actually makes me tingle a little bit that we've actually done something really good and it's going to yeah, benefit it's great, people. And we, we were talking amongst ourselves, weren't we? We were thinking, is there a way we can kind of keep this running through charity initiatives that, that we put on? So hopefully we'll we'll be able to make some more money to, to, to fund this. For, it's funded for the season now, isn't it? I think yes, it is. Yeah, it's funded for the whole season, which is just seems incredible. It's such a horrible, horrible disease yeah. and a horrible things for fa- for families to go through. So to think that in some way what we've done might help make their lives a bit better and a bit easier that's a really really nice thing and obviously we really as you said we loved doing the event and it was something really good for us to do but the the grander scale of things is that we've done something really good to help people and that, that, you can't put a price on that that's brilliant no that's right very proud uh, so well done to the foundation as well and thanks to everyone that came because there's no way we're making that money without without the people that came and were so generous in the auctions and, and things like that I mean we talk every week about Sarbid on Blue Bar on your nose <laughs> but you know if people don't do stuff like that that yeah. doesn't happen so it's it's not uh, something that's down to us for putting on an event it's down for all those wonderful people that, that, that joined us as well couldn't agree more so uh, also congratulations to the Villa Foundation for, for getting it sorted they obviously did the big sleep out as well yeah. um, so well done to everybody that, that, that slept out and, and raised money for that as well That's it, it's amazing what the Villa Foundation is doing. I um, love the foundation. Again, I spe- feel like we say there's so many things where you just turn around and say, I'm so proud of, of our club. It's yeah. just brilliant. Uh, I want to hand over to you. Oh, I was hoping you might have put something down in the notes. But Cart Carrington. No, yeah. you said you'd take it. So, Car- Carter Carrington, I'm just going to basically read the text that Mar- Marlon, his dad, who I know quite well. I said, I said earlier, I'm mean, in our uh, WhatsApp group, no idea. There's no other Marlons when we talk That's about Marlon true. Harewood. I'm about to literally read something from another Marlon. That's true. Although he's actually pretty much universally known as Carter, Carter's dad. Mm. So, young Carter Carrington, so. Carter's a seven-year-old amputee with an Aston Villa prosthetic leg. Many people who listen and watch our podcast will know exactly who he is because yeah. he's pretty much in... I think he's been in more newspapers and TV appearances and stuff than the me and you put together. Right, yeah. I would imagine he's a season ticket holder. He makes a 350-mile round trip to Villa Park every week and he's won gold medals at the British and World Taekwondo Championships despite being the only disabled competitor. That's amazing. Which is just an incredible achievement. He's a very inspirational young lad. He doesn't let his, his uh, disability define him at, at all. He's, he's, to be fair, he's a little lunatic if, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> whenever, 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 I've, whenever I've seen him. So he's been asked to represent Team GB at the Australian Championships but no government funding available for the trip and obviously it's a very, very I- expensive trip but his dad does everything for him to be fair really gives him a good life and wants to be able to make him go so he's called upon the support of, of the Villa fan base so to give Carl the opportunity the kids come come over so many ob- obstacles in, in his life and this is just another one so hopefully he'll smash this like he has done everything else even if Villa fans could spare a pound 
to donate to his I think it's his GoFundMe or, or just giving page if we can we'll get the link in the in the, in the video on, on YouTube as well help him fulfill his dreams so if we can help again it's a great thing for Villa fans to do and I know Villa fans do loads of stuff for charities and various, various things but if we can help Carter get to the, those championships that'll be a great thing as well yeah it's absolutely amazing an amazing story and and like you say inspirational so yeah we'll put the link on on youtube and, and maybe retweet it as well yeah, yeah. i um, think i've already retweeted a couple of times but i'll do it again yeah so that's that's really good anything you can spare would be would be phenomenal um and and keep on going Carter. Yeah, Carter's a smash smashing young lad good stuff marlon's uh, okay as well yeah don't yeah. mind it um okay yeah. Is that it? I've yeah. got a couple more questions yeah, here. Do you want them? Yeah, do them. All right, John T. Bonte, Villa on tour versus uh, Villa View 5v5 rematch. You uh, oh, Both yes. both teams are allowed one player uh, oh. from the current Villa squad. Uh, who do you pick? Where were we lacking? Would you, sir? Where did you play? <laughs> <laughs> uh, goal Everywhere. scorer. Everywhere. Goal scorer, goal scorer, really. goal scorer yeah. Uh, Matt Lynch. Matt Lynch is the goal scorer, sure. isn't he? The goal scoring sensation. Shouldn't have got a chance, to be fair. Past or present was this? Mm, current Villa current, squad. Yeah. Probably McGinn because he just doesn't get tired. I was thinking McGinn. McGinn or Trezeguet? Trezeguet would just dance around everybody, wouldn't he? Yeah, uh, I feel like because Steve was trying to be our a little bit, wasn't there? A bit of creative spark in there. Aston was a. Uh, a bit like Mings, wasn't he? he? Liked to play out from the back. He was, he was left footed. It's a be, nice compliment. You'd be, <laughs> be absolutely buzzing with that. With that compliment, <laughs> we were. I like, feel like we were more lacking like a goal scorer though. Yeah. Hey Wesley. Oh Wesley. I'm gonna go Wesley. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd say Trezeguet would be would be a creative that we could have possibly. I mean, he, he could have walked. And he's taking your there. position on the wing. Then you're dropping yourself from the team. <sighs> I guess they are. Yeah, <laughs> that's not good. Fair, I could drop Lynch. Fair decision. I'm Lynch is the goal scorer. He keeps, the, he keeps the shirt. You're gone. Oh mate, Tom's done himself out of his own place. Tough, uh, unbelievable. John McGod Seven favorite album of 2019. Intrigued to see what music you're into. Mine is Dave Psychodrum. I quite like Dave. I didn't Who's think Dave? I would. The he's like a a rapper grime artist kind he's of. Just thing. called Dave. Yeah, <laughs> which is class. That's literally just his. his I think so. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's strange. Never heard of it. I think you'd have heard of it if you if you um, it's on Radio One. Dave is on Radio One. Quite I don't listen to Radio One. So oh, well, then I don't no. listen to Radio Really, I've gone for Loyal Karner's "Not Waving But Drowning" album. Again, which, I don't know who that is. Loyal Karner. He did the song "Loose Ends" with um, Georgia Smith. Oh yeah, I know the one. <laughs> Again, it was on radio. Are you going to play it? No, I'm trying to find what my, the album I bought is called. Though I like it. Oh called. right, okay. I can't remember what the album's called. So there you go, Loyal Karner. I've been listening to that on repeat. This I feel like this is a bad a bad year for me just listening to albums because I'm all into cryptocurrency podcasts yeah exactly you're a big <laughs> podcast so I don't really listen to many podcasts I should probably get on it a bit more because I'll probably enjoy them I'll just have to go with my favourite bands bands that brought out their album this year The National I am easy to find okay great album great album check out The National Dolan doesn't like The National you've always ta- he's Best mate Kieran and me both love the national. Oh really? And he always ribs us both about it for some reason. Like it's really offensive to him. There you go. Because obviously he's the music master. Right. Yeah. Okay. Too popular for him. He'd be him. unhappy with everything that's come out in that segment, Dolan, I imagine. I think he'll I think he likes Loyal Khan. I've tweeted about it before. I'm sure he's liked it. Maybe he hasn't. We'll find out. So you mean you we'll end up liking all kinds of things on Twitter sometimes. That's just true. Tips. That is true. All right, we've managed to do an hour podcast. I told then, you he would. Is, which is pretty Not good. sure how good it was, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we managed to do it. Um, anything else? Any no, more for any more? I mean, 15 minutes of the podcast was taken taken up by me thinking th- who England played in the true. players' debuts, wasn't it, to be fair? So. Very true. Um, we're going to have an announcement on mugs very, very soon. Um, also, we've got another competition we've had a couple of competitions the Twitter competition running at the moment isn't it yes. football bubbles for football check that out yeah nice little villa villa hat very good hat um, and we're going to have a couple more with 1 to 11 kits as well so keep keep watching because there are there are competitions aplenty yeah I've gone with an interesting uh, style with my shirt tonight so for those listening by audio I'm wearing the 93 to 95 Muller home shirt mm. that we won the Coca-Cola Cup in I've gone for buttons all done up but collar up still very Eric Cantona yeah it's a bit Eric, Eric Cantona I feel like I have to be a certain type of flair player to wear your shirt like this like if Grealish was wearing if we had this shirt now Grealish would very much wear it like this yeah I would imagine just to stand out from the crowd yeah but Steve Staunton couldn't get away with no, that no boring Tom Julian would wear it Oh wear, yeah, would wear it like this, wouldn't and you? Tucked in. Colours down, tucked in. Yeah, I mean shorts up to the <laughs> nipples and some of the pictures I've seen. But yeah, 
Yeah. That's it. Yeah, good, good times. Good stuff. All right, nice one. Uh, we are going to do a preview of the Brighton game. So that, right now, aren't we? Yeah, that will be out shortly as well. Uh, I'm doing fan cams this week, so don't let that put you off. Um, Record turnout, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, and then we'll be back again next week, won't we? Yeah, looking forward to it already, Tom. Good stuff. Let's hope we're talking about another three points for the Villa. Yeah, do all the usual. Subscribe, like, all that jazz. I'd already nodded yeah. as if we yeah. finished. <laughs> I know it's fine we're still going you haven't haven't disconnected the camera yet as well apologies of any video errors at the end that'll be due to Dom I'm going to take it now bye thank you bye if you enjoyed that video why not watch another click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left easy please